Be your the next that must be bankrupt, so. No death before it ends a mortal woe. The ripest fruit falls first, and so doth he. His time is spent, our pilgrimage must be. So much for that. Now for our Irish wars, we must supplant those rough, rough headed curs. And for these great affairs to ask some charge, towards our assistance we seize to us the plate, corn, revenues, and movables whereof our humble God did stand possessed. How long shall I be patient? How long shall tender duty make me suffer wrong? Not Gloucester's death, nor Hereford's banishment, not Gaunt's rebukes, nor England's private wrongs have ever made me sour my patient cheek or bend one wrinkle to my sovereign's face. I am the last of noble Edward's sons, of whom thy father, Prince of Wales, was first. In war was never lion raged more fierce. In peace was never gentle lamb more mild than that young and princely gentleman. His face thou hast, for even so looked he accomplished with the number of thy hours. But when he frowned, it was against the French and not against his friends. His noble hand did win what it did spend, and spent not that which his triumphant father's hand had won. His hands were guilty of no kindred blood, but bloody with the enemies of his kin. Oh, Richard, York is too far gone with grief, or he would never come here. My to uncle, me. what's the matter? My liege, pardon me, if you please. If not, I, at least, not be pardoned, am content with all. Seek you to seize and write into your hands the rights and royalties of banished character. He is not gone dead, and doth not yet live. Was not gone to just? And he is not carried through. Did not one deserve to have an heir? Is not his heir a well deserving son? Take Hereford's rights away, and take from time his charters and his customary rights. Let not tomorrow, then in sue today, be not thyself. For how art thou king but by fair sequence and succession? Now, for God, God forbid I say true. If you do wrongfully seize Hereford's right, you put a thousand dangers upon your head. You lose a thousand well-disposed hearts, and freak my tender patience. Those thoughts which honor and allegiance cannot think. Think what you will. We seize into our hands his plate, his goods, his money, and his lands. I'll not be by the wire. My liege, farewell. What will ensue hereof, there's none can tell. But by bad courses may be understood that their events can never fall out good. Tomorrow next we will for Ireland, and his time, I trust. And we create in absence of ourselves our uncle York, Lord Governor of England. For he is just, and always loved us well. Come on, our queen. Tomorrow must we part. Be merry, for our time of stay is short. Money for 
these Irish wars is broken as taxations notwithstanding, but by the robbing of the banished duke. His noble kinsman, the generous king. What lords? We hear this fearful tempest sing, yet see no shelter to avoid the storm. We see the very wreck that we must suffer. And unavoided is the danger now, for suffering so the causes of our death. No, not so. For even in the hollow eyes of death, I spy light appearing. But I dare not say how near the tidings of our comfort is. Nay, let us share thy thoughts as thou dost ours. Be confident to speak, your comfort. We three are but thyself, and speaking so, thy words are but as thoughts. Therefore be bold. Then thus, I have before the long a bay for me. Received intelligence that Harry Duke of Hereford is well furnished by the King of the King, with eight tall ships, with three thousand men, is making hither with all due expedience, and shortly will to touch our northern shore. Perhaps yet ere then save that he first save, save the first departing of the king for Ireland. If then we shall shake off our slavish yoke, redeem from groping on the blemish crown, wipe off the dust that hides our scepter's guilt, and make my majesty look like itself, away with being close to Ravens. But if you feign to fearing to do so, stay and be secret, and myself will go. To horse, to horse, urge.